second appeal to the Greek population for testimonies. Sarah Lucia Hasselreusing, Turner Street 7, 42283 Wuppertal, Germany, 0049-202-250-2621. Human Rights Activist. Dear ladies and gentlemen, at July the 5th of 2015, the Greek people has, with a significant majority, voted Ochi against a new memorandum to be imposed via the EFSF. At July the 8th of 2015, the Greek government has applied for an ESM loan which will bring even worse conditions. It seems in this situation that the Greek population will get out of the humanitarian crisis only with the support of the universal criminal law. The current development with the ESM has been foreseeable. Thus, I have filed in 2010 and 2012 eight constitutional complaints in Germany with together more than 1,000 pages. And I have filed at November the 21st of 2012 to the International Criminal Court ICC at The Hague a charge file number OTPCR 345-12 against unknown for the suspicion of a crime against humanity because of intentions and at the same time systematic and large-scale damage to the health of the Greek population. Article 7, Paragraph 1, Lit H and K, Roman Statute. Everyone has a human right to the, for the respective person, highest attainable standard of physical and mental health according to Article 12 UN Social Pact. In addition to that, the human right to health is protected for women by Article 12 of the UN Women's Rights Convention, CEDAW, and for children by Article 24 Children's Rights Convention, CRC. Furthermore, children have to be protected according to Article 19 CRC against damages. As a result, from that and from the Social Progression Clause, Article 2 UN Social Pact, the human right to health needs to be less affected by austerity measures than any other so, uh, social human right. General Command Number 14 to the UN Social Pact that must have been known to those responsible for the conditions imposed on Greece. Even if the situation in the state budget and in the social insurance might be so serious that it can be solved only by significant interventions into the property of the creditors, tax hikes and social cuts there would nevertheless have to be saved for all inhabitants of Greece enough for their medical supply, for healthy food and for housing. According to an estimation by the former Greek health minister, Mr. Adonis Georgiades, 700 million euros per year would suffice for an amount estimated by him of 1.9 to 2.4 million people in Greece without health insurance. Instead, up to 50 billion euros are spent alone for the financial stability of the Greek financial sector. 
let me give you an impression what is coming up to you and sooner or later to all inhabitants of all EU member states and why it is being done. As meanwhile, also the preliminary report of June the 17th and 18th of 2015 by the Truth Commission on the Greek public debt, which has been installed by the Greek Parliament, shows the loans to Greece via the Greece support and via the EFSF mainly aim at the safeguarding of creditor banks and the recapitalization of Greek banks and at privatization. They have never aimed at the benefit of the Greek population. As pointed out in the press declaration, UN human rights experts welcome Greek referendum and call for international solidarity of June the 30th of 2015 by Victoria Dandan and Alfred Desires, the UN human rights experts on international solidarity and on democratic and equitable order, any treaty or law and agreement that force a country to violate the universal human rights is null and void. According to Article 53 Vienna Treaty Law Convention. That whiteness applies certainly even more on conditions which are part of a crime against humanity. The Greek government could have averted the subjugation under the ESM by applying to the UN General Assembly for an advisory opinion of the International Court of Justice on the question of the whiteness, Article 53, Vienna Treaty Law Convention, of the Memoranda of Understanding and or of the treaties, ESM Treaty, EFSF Framework Treaty, TFEU, which demands such a strictness. The former Prime Minister, His Excellency Mr. Alexis Tsipras, has regarding the voidness of credit conditions provenly been informed about this possibility already in January 2014. With Greece now under the ESM, the imposed conditions are going to become even harder since the European Council has explicitly demanded at its summit at March the 24th and 25th of 2011 that, quote, measures reducing the net present value of the debt will be considered only when other options are unlikely to deliver the expected results, quote, end. That means, according to the historical method, according to the historical method of legal interpretation, that the ESM law allows any reduction of the nominal value of the state debts only after all other measures, including the marginalization of the social system and the privatization of the public utilities, Article 14 TFEU, and of the sovereign institutions, Article 2 of Protocol 26 to the treaties of the EU, but also smaller debt relief measures like lowering of interest rates have not restored the debt uh, repayment capacity. The free trade treaties TTIP, CETA and TISA are the next step to enforce that privatization also on the non-insolvent member states and to make that privatization without precedent irreversible. Why many conditions imposed by the IMF are so inhuman has been exposed by Professor Dr. Joseph Stieglitz 
a former chief economist of the World Bank, in The Guardian already at April the 29th of 2001. He has explained, referring to the examples of Bolivia, Ecuador and Indonesia, that some social cuts have been deliberately made so hard that they have led to riots, which in turn has reduced the demand and the prices for the assets to be privatized. According to Professor Stieglitz, free trade is the next step after the privatization. Davis Budo, an economist and former IMF employee, has already exposed in September 1991 that, according to UNICEF, conditions imposed by IMF and World Bank have killed up to 7 million children under the age of 5 years alone in the time from 1982 to 1991. For the shift of money, resources, public utilities and today even sovereign institutions into private hands in an organized and criminal way, the health and even the lives of people are being intentionally destroyed. The study, Can Banks Individually Create Money Out of Nothing? The Series and the Empirical Evidence, published at September the 18th of 2014 in the International Review on Financial Analysis, Elsevier Publishing House, has empirically proven the credit creation theory that real money, the money on the banking accounts, is created out of nothing. When a bank grants a loan, its creation comes provenly neither from the savers bringing cash to the bank nor from the central bank. They book demand to get the loan back to liability to pay the loan out for the creation of the loan and so of the real money and do the reverse booking entry when the loan is paid back, and so the real money is deleted. They get interests for per saldo nothing. Since every bank can create more loans and so real money out of nothing than the equity of the respective bank is, every bank is replaceable. There are no systemic too big to fail banks at all. The birth and the death of real human beings are different from those of real money. Their health and their lives are absolutely real, are irreplaceable, are endlessly more valuable. I have consciously directed the charge against unknown because so many persons from many countries are involved in the drafts and in the decisions on the conditions in connection with the loans of Greece support and EFSF and the creation of the mechanisms for the imposition of those conditions and in the obligation of those mechanisms to an inhuman strictness like that towards Greece according to the preamble of the EFSF Framework Treaty and like that of the practice respectively modalities of the IMF according to the conclusions of the ECOFIN Council of May the 9th of 2010 file number SN2564-1-1 Presumably only the files of the coming into existence of the conditions and testimonies will bring clearness which concrete persons are responsible for those actions which have led to the damage of so many inhabitants and citizens of Greece. Only the International Criminal Court can cope with a case of such international dimension. The guilty persons must be detected and be held accountable 
and the damaging of the health of the Greeks by the austerity measures must be stopped. It is no fate and not, no natural disaster if the health of people is damaged because one deprives them of medically needed means. It is a crime against humanity according to Article 7, Paragraph 1, Lich H and K Roman Statute, if one intentionally, knowing that one does it, systematically or large scale, damages the health of a civil population. It is already a sufficient degree of intention for this crime. If one imposes conditions which damage the health or goes on imposing them, even though one knows that they cause or will cause such a damage, even if one has not the aim to damage the health, but accepts that to reach other aims. I have, in my charge, shown connections between the conditions and the results to the hunger and to the damaging of the health system at Greece. In order to achieve that the ICC can start a procedure and find out the guilty persons, it is not only necessary to prove the system and the large scale at an abstract level and to prove the mental element of the crime, knowledge and intention, but it also needs enough testimonies by people who have been damaged or as far as they already have died by their relatives. As already explained in my first appeal for testimonies regarding the deaths of unarmed demonstrators at September the 28th of 2009 at Guinea, 150 victims, and regarding presumed war crimes in the years 2003 to 2008 at Iraq, 85 of sampled 400 cases have been enough for the ICC to presume a large scale. At Greece, for more, for many more than 150 people, necessary medicaments and medical treatments or food and housing are not affordable anymore because of the austerity measures, since, at an abstract level, the system and the large scale are much more evident than in many other cases. We believe that already some more than 85 testimonies of concrete inhabitants of Greece whose health has been damaged by the austerity measures will be enough to move the ICC to start a procedure and to find out the guilty persons. The point at issue is that as many victims as possible themselves testify and so actively engage for justice and for the punishing of the perpetrators. This is something you can do for justice and to stop the atrocities without waiting for a government. Already many people have made testimonies after our first appeal. We want to express our respect and our thankfulness to them. And we are thankful to the former Greek ambassador, Mr. Leonidas Chrysantopoulos, and particularly to the voluntary clinic at Eliniko for their support. We estimate that we still need between 40 and 50 more testimonies. It is certainly positive for the case if many more testimonies are made, like in the Iraq case. The point at issue is to prove the damaging of the health by concrete austerity measures. If you have suffered serious health damage because you as a patient with diabetes, heart problems, cancer, multiple sclerosis, stroke, kidney failure, or any other serious bodily disease, and have been uh, denied necessary medicaments or medical treatments, I request you to support the charge. Please explain since which time your health has been damaged by which measure. This can refer 
to medicaments or to health services of physicians which are not available anymore are only with unaffordable co-payments or self-payments or not anymore close enough to the place where you live. If you or your children are undernourished or malnourished, the point for your testimony is since when and because of which cuts, for example, of your pension, of your unemployment benefit or of your wage, you have not had any more enough means for your sufficient nutrition. Also, if the loosening of the protection against unjustified dismissal or the rise of specific costs of living, for example, because of the VAT increase on food, are the cause, your testimony is important. Please also testify if you have your medical supply or are not undernourished only because you are supported by a charitable organization. If you have become homeless or if you have to live in an unheated apartment because of a lack of financial means, please also explain since when, because of which cuts, you have not been able anymore to afford housing, respectively heating. If possible, please attach to your testimony also photocopies of pieces of evidence which show that with the in financial means available to you, the necessary costs for food, apartment or health could not be paid anymore. We explicitly also request the relatives of people who have died because of the austerity measures to testify. The voluntary clinic of Elinico has developed a questionnaire, see at the end of this video, which helps you to structure your testimony and which includes the consent to the use of the testimony for the charge with file number OTPCR 345-12. Please send it to the address of Helinico, Metropolitan Clinic, a Community Clinic at Helinico, Yatrio Helinico, inside the old American military base at Helinico, postcode 16777, Elinico, Attiki, Greece. Every testimony with evidential pieces of information regarding the damaging of the health of concrete persons by the conditions is an important contribution to the solution of the crime against humanity in Greece. With friendly greetings, Sarah Lucia Hasselreusing.